we have one of our grantees here to, today, Dr. Uh, Anthony Mora, who's an associate professor in um, the College of Literature, Arts and Sciences um, and uh, interim program director for Latina, Latina studies and um, uh, American culture and, and history. Uh, his research interests uh, focus on uh, the historical construction of race, gender, and sexuality. Um, and he has led out the uh, University of New Mexico Spelman Mo uh, College and Morehouse College um, pipeline initiative that they have for about six or seven years or so at this point. Uh, and he'll, he'll um, chat a little bit further um, uh, as we go on. So we would like to welcome Dr. Moore here. Quick round of applause. Uh, thank you for joining us here today. And um, thank you for your willingness to um, you know, kind of share uh, your experiences as it relates to engaging with minority serving institutions towards creating pathways to opportunities for um, those students uh, and our students um, uh, as well. So thank you for joining us. Well, thanks so much for having me. Yeah. So uh, with that, I'll start with the first question, as I always do. Um, can you talk a little bit about the nature of your relationship with the University of New Mexico, Spelman and, and Morehouse, and you know, the types of activities you all are engaging in? So yes, as you mentioned, we started our program, which is with the College of LSA, the Humanities Division in particular, and New Mexico, the University of New Mexico, Morehouse College and Spelman College in 2015. So as the program has developed, we've slowly added different components to it. And, and those fall under sort of two big categories. So one, of course, is focused on student opportunities. So things like bringing students to the Ann Arbor campus for preview weekends in which they see what Ann Arbor is like. They also find out um, some tips about how to put together a graduate application. They meet with faculty in humanities units that relate to their own interests. We also partner with the Mishers program, which is a, a summer opportunity um, program through the Rackham Graduate School, which is open nationwide but there are designated slots um, available for students from New Mexico, Morehouse, or Spelman. We also have um, this past year, and we'll talk more about the challenges of COVID, I know, um, run some webinars as well for students. And so there's sort of the student facing side, um, and then there is the faculty facing side. So uh, really we believe and we've learned that uh, a lot of these projects depend on mutual trust and mutual respect and knowing each other as scholars. Uh, and so there's different ways in which we try to facilitate that. So one is that we sponsor faculty to travel either between Albuquerque and Ann Arbor or Ann Arbor and Albuquerque or Atlanta and Ann Arbor or vice versa. Um, to present their research. We have opportunities for faculty who have a sabbatical at their home institution to spend some of that time at Michigan and to take advantage of the library and we provide office space. If they're here for the semester, we've also provided a, a research workshop um, for them. Um, we've also involved um, them in sort of questions of policy and questions of developing the program, what types of things would be helpful for them. So um, again, we, we try to build those relationships in a way that um, is equitable mm -hmm. um, and that draws on, each of these sites have different strengths, but draws on those strengths. Thank you. Um, and then so there's one thing that I, I want to follow up, I mean, because as you kind of mentioned the both the student and faculty aspect and the, the activities that are associated with it. And um, I think there's something that is um, interesting in the way that you have thought about this over time and in ensuring that this is not um, one directional. So everything isn't centered or geared towards getting students to uh, Michigan, but also how can we get Michigan students into um, you know, University of New Mexico or create opportunities at Spelman and Morehouse. Can you talk a little bit about that and then how that fits into the activities as well? So that's absolutely right. We, 
since New Mexico has its own PhD programs, we want to make sure that um, it's understood that there's an opportunity when faculty visit Ann Arbor to be able to promote their programs um, and to engage with students here that might be interested. And we see all sorts of really great reasons why a student um, who's attended Michigan would really benefit from spending time in New Mexico and um, going through a PhD program or even a, a master's program at, at New Mexico. Um, Morehouse and Spelman don't have graduate programs in the humanities, so that's not um, part of their program. But nonetheless, we have been trying to think through ways in which we can get our students here, both undergraduate and graduate, engaged with students on those campuses and vice versa. Um, so one of the ways we've done that in the short term is through the preview weekends of having students, of course, involved with that and engaged with students there. Um, but we're still thinking over what some other options might be. Very good. Thank you for sharing. I, I think that's um, a point worth noting, right? Again, as you know, I think the work that we've done out of Rackham has been informed like folks such as yourself and you know others across campus. And again, being intentional about having these mutually beneficial relationships to ensure that we're not just again focus on that exchange of student. Like, how do we get that student from from their home institution to Michigan, but also thinking about what what ways can Michigan um, stand to, you know, uh, benefit from engaging deeper with the, the um, partner institutions as well. So thank you for that. Um, with that, what, like, what are your, from your perspective, like what are your individual motivations for pursuing such a, a relationship? And then, you know, the second part of that, is, you know, what are the motivations of like the department or, you know, humanities programs as, as a whole? Well, I mean, I think for my individual motivations, they're, they're personal. So, um, so I'm a mixed heritage Mexican American guy, um, which there are not very many Mexican American faculty members at Michigan or even nationwide. So I think that there's a real or I feel a real obligation to um, try to make opportunities to increase the diversity, um, not just for Latinx people, but for um, all people of color um, at Michigan and, and academia overall. So that's that's one of my certainly strong commitments personally. Um, for this particular project, it also helped that I am an alumnus of the University of New Mexico. So I grew up in New Mexico. Um, my undergrad degree was from New Mexico, so I also have a very special relationship with that university, and it, it is also one of the ways in which it made it easier to build contacts and start this program. Um, and similarly, I have two faculty partners, Ruby Tapia, who's in Women and Gender Studies, uh, and she grew up in Albuquerque a lot, more or less the same time I did, and then my other um, faculty partner is Jason Young, who's a, in history and is an alumnus of Morehouse College, which really gave us the opportunity to build those relationships. And so we all share that sort of personal commitment um, um, and outlook. In terms of LSA humanities, there's a real um, deficit in our programs um, because of a lack of diversity. And one of the things that's I observed is that um, many, many of those programs are admitting students of color, but often those students of color did not choose Michigan. And I think that the reasons for that um, are multiple, but one of them is that we haven't done the work to build those relationships. So we haven't done the work to build relationships with their faculty advisors at their home institutions who can say, oh, you know, we know the people at Michigan, they're really great, you should go and study with them. And we haven't built the relationships with the students. So Michigan is just an abstracted concept. Um, and it becomes very different if you visit here and you see what the resources are and you meet the faculty. So this type of program really addresses, I think, those fundamental um problems mm -hmm. in particular. Yeah. 
I think that, that that's a, a great point, right? Um, in many different ways. So one question that I that I often get um, is like, well, where do I start? Like, so if I want to establish a relationship like this, where do I start, right? And I think you highlight that. Well, you start where it makes the most sense, right? Like, where where are the existing connections? Where do I have um, some sort of um, um, capital that I can leverage towards, you know, meeting my own individual you know, goal of expanding access for students like me or students like yourself, right? Um, so, I mean, I think that's the, the one thing and answers that question. Where do I start? You start <laughs> where the connections already are. As I think about this when, when uh, my oldest daughter sells Girl Scout cookies and it's like, we start with grandparents first, right? They, <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna buy the most cookies, right? And <laughs> they're with the easy sell. That is <laughs> exactly right. And and so again, I think that that applies to these relationships as well, right? Because there's already some sort of level of existing connections, some sort of capital that exists, uh, and leveraging that, uh, some sort of trust that already exists, right? And you can leverage that into you know essentially what you you've seen here. Um, and then I think. The, the other part of that, um, particularly from like the perspective of of like a department unit, school or college, however, you know, folks um, may look at it is like the value in establishing a relationship early on and doing it at a, um, uh, you know, systems level, as opposed to, again, focusing on the exchange of the student, like how can we strengthen our relationships with our colleagues? make ourselves more familiar with the students over time, have multiple touch points. So that way, when students are admitted into the program, there's been enough connections to where it's like, oh, I don't feel, I feel comfortable coming to Michigan. Uh, and in some cases, the you know faculty at um, the MSI institution, like I feel comfortable sending my students there, right? So I think those are um, two incredibly, uh, incredible points there. Um, so you kind of mentioned like this this idea of um, like access, right? Uh, access and opportunity, um, like di diversifying academia through the, through these sorts of initiatives, right? So what would be the ultimate goal or or benefits of a relationship like this? Not just for Michigan, uh, not just for the MSI, but like at large, like the society at large. Well, I think the initiatives like this and not just ours i mean but the multiple ones that are happening across michigan and the multiple ones that are happening nationally have the potential to be transformative of higher ed um, and that's a transformation that desperately needs to happen um, the reality is most institutions like michigan don't reflect the larger population of the United States. Um, most of the faculty uh, don't have um, all of the uh, experiences and cultural knowledge to be meaningfully engaged with um, huge sections of the nation. Um, and that has to change. I mean, it's just the reality of where the US is. Um, and the you know one way that can happen is by providing a, a, an environment in which um, students from multiple backgrounds will be able to thrive and change higher ed. So it's not just about sort of letting a few people in and allowing the status quo to maintain itself, mm -hmm. but rather you know really thinking about a, a pretty you know significant shift in mm -hmm. how. Um, higher ed itself works, um, and and who's who's making decisions, who's contributing. So, uh -huh. um, these types of programs give me a lot of optimism for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same here. Which is probably why <laughs> why, why we engage in this work, right? Because it's not necessarily a, an easy thing. Like progress is um, perhaps not uh, as fast as we would like. <laughs> like to see right um but there is this at least as i you know for me personally i don't want to project like this is like this belief deep down that um there is um we have the capacity for change right um and it's just a matter of, like how do we 
continue to push on and um, with that capacity actually implement the change we, we would like to, to see, right? As you mentioned, these, these sorts of um, initiatives are you know, critical towards that. And we, we've talked, we talked a little bit in the past and I guess in line with that, right? Uh, we talked a bit about the past around like success and, you know, this type of work success is, <laughs> is long-term. <laughs> um, so what are you seeing uh, in terms of like promising, what, you know, what are some promising things that are coming from these relationships and the associated um, initiatives and activities? Well, I mean, I think that there's, I mean, there's different ways, of course, to think about success. The most obvious metric would be students who actually join PhD programs. Again, for us, it's always been about both at Michigan, but even broadly. Um, ideally, we would like them at Michigan, but, you know, there may be other reasons why they would choose a different institution. Um, and in that case, we have had success in terms of both increasing the number of applications um, from our partner institutions and also um, really amazing students who have joined us um, in various humanities departments and programs so history uh, american culture women and gender studies uh, english so all of those things are really great but it it is slow and and the numbers um not, you know, we're not talking about dozens and dozens, right? Because there aren't dozens and dozens of admission slots every year. Um, so, you know, some of it is about that, that sort of, um, as you say, sort of patience or long-term <laughs> sort of goal in mind. Um, so I think those are definitely very positive. Um, I think that the other thing, um, that I see is really positive is that when we started our program, um, Michigan really, there wasn't a lot of conversation about partnerships with MSIs. Um, and, if, and if there was, it was really, there was no central sort of place for it. So I've personally been really happy to learn about, well, one, I've been really happy that Edmund has joined um, Rackham as a sort of central nexus that can sort of coordinate and, and connect people. That has been really great. Um, but also just learning about the efforts that are happening in the other schools and colleges on campus that are really building up things. And so that also really gives me a lot of optimism, but it's not just, you know, LSA Humanities that's doing it or Taubman that's doing it, but there's actually a, a sort of bigger movement um, that is sort of across um, Michigan that I think is really exciting. Um, so, so. Yeah. See. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I think I I'll owe you a, a payment for those kind of words. I don't know if you accept Venmo or PayPal, but we'll give it to you. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I do agree. I, um, I, you know, those, the architects of this, this role, I think there's, you know, part of it is to, a great deal of appreciation is owed to them to, you know, and thinking about like, well, how do we, um, again, centralize the work to whatever extent that we can um, to um, better align our practices, our efforts, right? And I guess in short, not reinvent the wheel. And I mean, I, I think that is is important, right? Um, but again, also the the other aspect of the promising part, right? Again, the the long term the long term uh, impacts is where we we just we just won't we just won't see it because I think that uh, several things have to happen. Um, like one is like a like a mindset shift in the way we think about um, uh, applicants and graduate education, right? <laughs> what is a successful and this not not just for humanities broadly speaking. What is a, a, um, a potentially successful applicant look like from any institution and how do we think about the processes that are associated with admissions or even recruitment and, and admissions and um, those types of, of things, right? Um, and again, looking at the smaller um, pieces of engagement through, throughout, right? So if we can see success in that, we're getting 
the faculty or our collaborators at other institutions to respond to our emails <laughs> on a like <laughs> as in the short term. I mean, that may not seem like much, but in the short term, that's a lot. Can we host a meeting? Can we host some sort of collaborative workshop or talk? Co-teach a class or you know the, the activities. Those are all successes. So, um, unfortunately, I've been able to witness some of some of um, what you all have been able to achieve in this. Um, I think it's I think it's good. Um, as much as the promising practices or promising um, outcomes are helpful, I also think that um, examining the challenges are also critical in helping to advance the work uh, moving forward. So, what types of challenges have you all uh, run into, both generally speaking, but also COVID related, and then how have you all collectively worked together to uh, like both address and overcome those challenges? Well, the challenges are many and you've already sort of flagged some of them. So one, one challenge is hubris um, that we have at Michigan. And I would say I have it, I had it also when I started this program that, you know, well, we're Michigan, we're great. Of course, everybody would want to come here. And that's not really taking into account all the sort of questions that people might have about what type of environment Michigan might be for them, right? That, that we sort of take for granted a lot of things. And a lot of what we take for granted is that we're really intellectually rigorous and amazing. And that is true, but that is not the only experience that a student will have. Um, and, you know, being attentive to that, I think is, is really important so that you know that's one challenge of thinking holistically about students and what their experiences are here another challenge is about how admissions is done um, so in humanities it's a department by department process which makes good sense um, but there's so many different competing um, elements that go into the admissions process in any individual department that an initiative like this can just be sort of lost um, in the ground, right? Because uh, say in you know, one of my departments, which is history, there's trying to balance sort of, um, you know, we wanna make sure we have people who are doing, you know, very distant history and people who are doing more present history. You want to make sure that we're representing the world, right? We want to make sure that we have a balance of, um, you know, in terms of gender study. I mean, so there's so many different factors that go into trying to put together a cohort of students that sometimes, you know, staking out a, a claim for the importance of prioritizing students from MSIs is really hard to do. Um, and, I, and I do think that the only way that will ever really be solved is if there's dedicated funding for MSI students like the RMF fellowships. I mean, that's really the main way that um, departments would see this, would make this a priority. Um, but, you know, I think there's also more, um, so, you know, there are other narratives that I think we have to be really attentive to. So I think that broadly, there is sometimes a default, which I think is very unconscious. It's not even malicious, but it's very, very problematic that if um, you say you were leading a diversity initiative, that people assume that it's remedial, that somehow this is, you know, giving people, you know, some sort of extra chance. And, and that's really not what's happening, that these are really, some incredibly talented students that are going to be super competitive um, when they apply to graduate school. And if we don't do this work, they're going to choose other places. It's, it's Michigan that is in the remedial state, actually. It's Michigan that needs some intervention and, and changing to actually achieve the goals that I think we all want, which is to have you know, a diverse and engaged graduate student body. Um, so those are sort of big challenges. Um, COVID challenges um, are, are probably more what you might expect, which is it's very hard to maintain relationships when all you have is um, um, Zoom, right? It's, it's, it's not the same as being able to interact personally or fly out to various places. Um, plus everybody was exhausted and tired and didn't want to do other Zoom things. So, 
you know, that's been really difficult just to think about how to keep the momentum up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot, a lot there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, COVID uh, has like um, introduced an, a new level of uh, fatigue that uh, I don't know that anybody was was ready for. I was speaking with Maureen before this started, and you know, just trying to get folks to um, like part uh, participate in this series. Like, well, I I need to email people because I need people to speak to, uh, but. People are also <laughs> incredibly busy with just their roles in general, and then you throw COVID on top of that, and there's a little bit of hesitance on my end to to reach out. Um, but then I also think there's some some larger things, particularly around the this idea of um, like the remediation or like deficit framing of of these relationships, or you know, Michigan is in this. Benevol benevolent, benevolent role in that, you know, we engage with the minority serving institution, whichever institution type it may be, that they are the ones that are to benefit from this just because, you know, we're engaging with them. And as you point out, we've had this discussion several times. I tend to take an institutional responsibility role. If you want to engage with anybody, you have to first kind of take an introspective look and say, hey, what am I bringing to this? Like, how am I approaching this and through what lens? Um, and then how can I shift that in a way to where it's, um, I, I use the language of being culturally and intellectually responsive, right? So one being under uh, aware of and understanding of the, um, the culture uh, of the institution, right? Because the reality is, is that, at least from my perspective, is that not all Hispanic serving institutions are the same. Not all HBCUs are are the same. So you can't approach them all in the in the same way. So understanding institutional culture in which you engage with, as you point out, the uh, ability to travel to and from institution helps in creating this larger context of understanding around how do students experience education at the University of New Mexico? How do they experience education at Spelman and um, Morehouse, right? And then this idea of, of being intellectually responsive, right? And understanding that Spelman and, and particularly with Spelman and Morehouse where a teaching load may look vastly different than the teaching load at Spelman, uh, I mean, that's Spelman, University of Michigan, even uh, University of New Mexico, right? And the implications on that for many other things, right? And so um, how do we approach them in a way that says that, uh, you are my colleague and not that I'm me engaging with you is going to make you any, any better. I, um, I think those are two, you know, salient, salient points there for sure. Um, I'd like to close with, with a question uh, around, um, you know, takeaways, right? So for someone who is looking to engage with an MSI towards, um, you know, creating opportunities, access and opportunities for students or just thinking about collaboration across institutions. Um, based upon your experiences, like what are some things that they should be thinking about, uh, that they should be considering, that they should be planning for, who should they be bringing to the table, so on and so forth? Well, I think um, starting small is the way to go. So again, I, I think as I said, I have a lot of hubris, so you know, we launched like all the humanities, which was really <laughs> ambitious. Um, so maybe not quite being that, that grandiose when you go off. Um, and you know, uh, we've said it before, but I just think it's worth repeating that start with the people you already know. So you know, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to have been an, an alumni of an MSI, but you probably have met faculty at conferences or you've developed. Um, professional relationships with faculty at, at various MSIs and reach out to them and just say, you know, you're really interested in this, you're really committed to um, thinking about how to create opportunities um, for them, for their students, and ask, you know, start as a conversation, what would be useful to them? What could they imagine that, um, that Michigan can do that they would be interested in? Um, so that would be one thing I would say. Well, I guess those are two things. Um, yeah, I mean, that would probably be the best advice I could give. Very good. Yeah, the starting small is, 
is is key. You don't have to solve uh, all the world's problems at one time. You can start in your own neighborhood, right? <laughs> and scale as you as you grow. So I think that's incredibly helpful um, uh, for sure. Yeah. So those are all the questions that that I have for you. Uh, so one, I would like to just take a, a moment to pause and give you a quick hand clap for your time, energy, and effort. Uh, as you know, I always appreciate our conversations. <laughs> Uh, they always, too. yeah, always incredibly informative. Um, uh, I tend to appreciate the way that you frame the, the uh, particularly the responses. <laughs> they're, uh, they're always the responses that you didn't know you need, but you needed them anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, so thank you for that. We do have a, a couple questions here um, in the chat, one in particular um, around um, Around graduate students, like, so what are the implications for um, increasing access to graduate students or having a more diverse graduate student body? What are the implications for that, of that on um, having a more diverse faculty? And are um, any of the activities that you all are engaging in working towards um, uh, um, achieving a more diverse faculty? So those are great questions, and I actually see two ways that these types of programs can impact the diversity of faculty. So one is a more, you know, more immediate one that might come to mind, which is um, for humanities training PhD students. Most of them are going to want to become tenure track faculty. Not all of them. I mean, some of them um, might pursue different types of careers, but but usually the default is. Um, for humanities students, if they want to pursue a PhD, they're imagining already a career in uh, higher ed. So having more minority students means hopefully <laughs> having been more minority faculty. So that's a direct way. But there's actually another way that I think um, that we don't think about as often is that having a diverse grad student body can be a powerful recruiting tool for Michigan to bring faculty of color to Michigan. So if you have you know, a search or even a target of opportunity hire where you're trying to bring a faculty member here whose research is focused on URM communities and or identifies as URM, they're gonna notice what the sort of um, composition of the grad program is when they're visiting. And it will be likely important to them um, to see a diverse um, grad student body. So, you know, that's a more hidden way or, you know, a less measurable way, but I think it, those are things that are really important um, as well, so. All right, thank you for that. Oh, and I forgot to answer. So what are we doing to work towards yeah. that? Yeah. Um, so, you know, we've, we need to keep thinking about um, the students once they're here. So, um, you know, they, of course, have all the opportunities that other students have through Rackham initiatives and department initiatives. Um, and we've tried to do various things to build a sense of community among the students from Morehouse, Spelman, and New Mexico. Um, and we've talked at different times about, um, but we haven't yet implemented the maybe professional activity, you know, like, you know, how do you put together a CV or how do you, you know, next stages of um, their careers, but we haven't really gone to that stage yet. Um, so, um, but that would be one way I would imagine, or we have actually imagined um, maybe doing things around those, those, um, those lines. Very good. Thank you for that. Do we have any, any other questions for Anthony? The question around the I tend to the question around like the faculty piece is how I tend to try to think about the work broadly speaking in that so an MSI will have their their take on it as they as you know expressed by them in terms of what it is they um, seek to gain from this sort of relationship much like Michigan um, and then I try to encourage folks to think about this in a more global way. Like, what is the larger impact that we're hoping to have? And then how can our own respective um, goals, individual goals, and then our shared understanding of what those goals are, 
achieve this larger thing, like diversifying the professoriate, particularly in humanities spaces. Um, and that seems to help in some in some ways. I think when we tend to focus on our own individual, mostly speaking from the perspective of, of Michigan, when we're only focused on how do we get, uh, in some cases, and you mentioned earlier about like the increase in applicant pool, like for some, like that's enough. If we just increase the number of applicants in a pool, then then that's enough. But um, again, thinking about it, it's more, you know, aside from list, you know, increasing our applicants or increasing the number that are actually uh, that actually matriculate. But thinking about what is the larger goal here, and then how can we take this collective impact approach towards um, achieving it? So very good. Open it up. Uh, a little bit longer for another question or two, if we have any. And then I'll, do you have any concluding thoughts for us here today? Mm, I mean, uh, just more praise for you, Ed. Admit. <laughs> 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 you're here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take the praise. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'll take it, but but uh, no, I think you all are doing really good, really good work. I mean, I've stated that over the years, and the way that you all engage your um, MSI co um, collaborators, I think is uh, critical. Communication is in many ways like a, a part of it, and being responsive to feedback. I've seen that you all have done that um, again from the outside looking in. You have done a really good job of, of being responsive to the feedback. Um, um, even when it's great, uh, yeah, if it's great feedback, and even when it's uh, not the feedback that you hope to hear, right? Um, but again, being responsive and working towards that shared um, understanding is, is critical to to this work. So thank you for your efforts in in um, pushing pushing this work forward, uh, and thank you again for your your time, energy, and effort on on today, and sharing your thoughts with uh, myself and others, um, and hopefully. Those who are looking to establish these types of relationships or already have relationships in play, uh, place um, uh, have some, um, you know, are able to take something in and, and implement it as they move forward. So thank you. And uh, we will see you again. We'll be in touch. So. Well, thank you so much. And thanks for everybody who's attending and watching. So, All right. Until next time, everybody. Take care.